Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorwitz tutorial and today we're going to talk about everything you've ever wanted to know about the text tool. So this is part of a new series I'm planning focusing in on specific tools in Vectorworks. Nice short videos that basically just power you up and get your productivity to a really good level with specific tools. Not really workflow videos but really just showing you very very detailed knowledge about one tool in particular per video. So I really do hope you enjoy this new series. Let's get started with the text tool. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to show you is I've opened a file and this basic file is the textiles um, default file that Vectorwitz works with. Now you notice that I've actually altered this um, to make all of the fonts um, trebuchet based. So my favorite font is trebuchet MS. I quite like using this on my projects. I've also quite like Arial Black and Futuria. So I've got a few of these in here. Now let me just switch over to light mode for a second so it's a bit clearer for you to read. So if you do want to find this file, just pop into your resources, um, go to the Vectorworks libraries and defaults, and then down at the bottom near T is going to be textiles. And here we go, we can right click and open the file. So if you do want to adjust your default textiles, which I'm going to show you how to use in a minute, this is a really neat trick and will save a lot of time for you. You can also put this file on the server so that everybody can access it within a bigger practice as well. So let's have a look at how textiles work. So if I go into a completely blank document, let's get started with some text. So if I click the keyboard shortcut for the text tool, number one, I'll basically get my text tool popping up. And the first thing I'm going to do is go and type in um, a couple of basically, you know, words. Let's type something in, bedroom. And whoops, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so this is something that a lot of people do, makes typos or spelling mistakes. And I'm always amazed that people don't know about how cool the not only the format text is, but I'm always amazed how people don't know about check spelling. So whatever you do, uh, make sure you leverage the power of the check spelling in Vectorworks. It's got a really good dictionary built in. Um, there is some options in there that you can actually kind of uh, teach it as well, the capitalization and so on as well. But you can also teach it by clicking learn to teach some spelling mistakes um, or specific words that you may find that are you know required in your projects. Let's go ahead and change that one. Now one extra little tip here, if I just undo for a second, is if you want to check the entire document, what you can actually do is go to the text menu and you can go to check spelling. So if you check spelling here, and basically you have the option to check all your text blocks, you know, things like symbols as well, records. Normally I just do uh, the text blocks and viewports, but it will also check all the design layers and all the sheet layers too. And basically that will kind of pick up all those spelling mistakes in the entire document. Sometimes it can take a little bit of learning to pick up specific specifications and things like that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and change that. Okay, so we have some text on the drawing. And if I really want to, now I can basically choose a text style. So there's two ways I can do this. I can pop over to my resources manager. And let's say I want to have this in Futura. I can click and it will basically change that font to that Futura font. Now the other way to do this is my favourite way. Pop open the resource manager and just click onto the home button to go to the file you're currently in. So you can see if I change through to text styles, you'll now see that first text style is being loaded in. The good thing is though, because I've actually got the text styles open in the background, what I can actually do is essentially drag and drop. Okay, so I can drag and drop those text styles. Let's try something a little bit different. And you can see it's very easy just to apply the different styles. So really, really neat. I can also, as well as dragging and dropping, I can right click and apply. That works really well. Or if you prefer, you can double click. Now where this works extremely well is when you've got groups of multiple text so basically, uh, if you drag and drop, you'll notice it only goes on to the active one. Okay, so the best thing to do there is right click and apply. Okay, or double click to access those textiles. Okay, so let's go ahead and make all of those uh, Futura. Now, the really nice thing about textile is that if you've set them up in your document, all you need to do is edit them uh, once. So now I've got that into my document. You'll see the different sort of textiles that I've brought in from the textiles and document here. So if I go and right click and click edit, there's a couple of things that we can do here that are really cool. Of course, I can change things like the font size, nice and easy. I could change the alignment, things like center and center. But one of my favorite things to do is change the color. So let's say that I would like a very specific color for this particular project 
Uh, Farrow and Ball is one of my favourite kind of colour paint manufacturers, and I would like a Barrington blue colour. Okay, so if I click here, you'll notice at the moment I've just got the standard colour palette. And while I could try and use the custom colours to match that specific colour, what would actually be really nice is if I had a Farrow and Ball colour chart. So if I go to Manage Colour Palettes, suddenly you will notice that we've got this fantastic range of colour palettes in Vectorworks that we can use, including the wonderful Farrow and Ball colours here. So Gilux Canada, for example, another nice colour palette here with lots of really nice colours. In fact, look at that, 1800 almost colours. I like zombie down at the bottom, particularly good. Um, we've got the lovely Benjamin Moore colours, America's colours, always nice. I actually really like the historical colours as well. Uh, lots of nice muted browns and greys and greens and blues as well. So whatever your colour chart, uh, these are the ones you should apply. Obviously architects love RAL colours too. Great, so we've got those applied. Now click and you'll see that with a single click I can drop down to Farron Ball. Okay, now to find my colour. Here's a really great little tip. All we need to do is go to List View, scroll down and there we go, the wonderful Barrington Blue. And if I did know the code, which I certainly do by now, I can type in number 14 and it will also start to filter that particular colour palette using that number code. Or I could have typed in Barrington Blue and it would have found it for me. So when we click OK, you'll notice that as soon as I now click OK, having edited the style, basically the entire document will modify and all those textiles will update absolutely everywhere. So this is a really, really great little tip just for the sake of setting up a new style. So the final thing I just want to show you on textiles, how to create one from scratch. So if I go to the text tool, number one, keyboard shortcut, all you need to do to create a brand new one is drop down and go to new. And in here, again, you'll see they've got the create textile dialogues. So let's make a brand new one called room names. And this is where we can set up those defaults that we would like. Let's go for a nice big font, 24 point. And you'll notice that now, you know, when I start to type in some uh, letters or sort of room names into my project, they will be centered and centered. Uh, so a big advantage of that is when you actually scale the viewport, they will stay in the location they are. Good, so I really hope you've enjoyed that first tip about textiles and all the wonderful things you can do. So I definitely would recommend you edit your default textiles. And basically, let's just go back to that document. So if I right click, I can reveal in Finder. So that'll actually show where it is hidden away. And this is the path on the Mac, as you can see, in the Vectorworks folder, libraries, defaults, and textiles. But if I do want to, I can just pop it open. And now at any time, what's really nice is I might decide I just want to add that new room names font. So what I'm gonna do is just drag those down, uh, give myself a little bit more space. And basically, here is my room names. Drag and drop onto there just to apply that particular font and size. Note the spacing is slightly different because it was centralized in terms of its alignment there. Okay, so I can now save that document. And that means at any time in the future in new documents, I will have all of these default textiles available when I go to my drop down, And they're all gonna be exactly the font and size that I require for my project. So it's another job done that I just don't have to worry about. Well, thanks for watching this very first video on text. I've actually got more to show you on text as well. So make sure you subscribe and like this video if you did. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.